Luke Leatherman with Fueling Parts here to showcase our 9006 pressure test tool for the Milwaukee 8 oil pumps. This pressure test tool is designed to work only with the fueling oil pumps. It does not work with the factory and our competitors oil pumps and that's just due to the exit of the relief valve. We exit our relief valve back into the cam plate so that it joins in with the incoming oil coming in from the oil tank. The tool comes with a plate, a regulator, and a pressure gauge. You'll have to come up with the fitting uh, to match your shop air hose. The tool comes with gaskets and two different ganorps. The thicker ganorp is for the oil cooled engine and this is for the water cooled engine. We've got two oil pumps set up here. Uh, I'm going to showcase a pump that's already been pressure tested and then I can show you a couple of tricks of the trade to get one to seat and seal if you're having some issues. But what we're testing here is the relief valve, which goes all the way down into the seat. You've got a spring and then a roll pin that holds it all down. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the oil cooled standoff onto the plate. We've got a countersunk bolt that's going to hold it into place. You'll have to swap the bolt out to swap standoffs. We've got some knurling on the plate so you can clamp it into your vise. We also have two holes here in case you wanted to physically mount it and create a test stand for doing the oil pumps. So we've got the gaskets here. You can see we line up. This is the hole to work the relief or the roll pin. This is the exit. This is where the oil or the air is coming in. And then we have our bolt holes. The oil pump and or the standoff, Gnorp, whatever we want to call it, also takes a gasket. So we're going to drop the gasket down into the oil pump. And there is a lit a little bit of slop in with this. We want to make sure that you take advantage and try to center it up as best as possible. So this will seal the pump against the plate and then the center standoff seals the inside of the pump. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the shop air to the regulator. And now ideally what we want to see is we want to see the valve seated and sealed from 0 to 30 PSI and we want the full pop off in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 PSI. We're not so concerned with the full pop off pressure but the main concern is that sealing of the valve between 0 and 30 because that's going to guarantee when you've got hot oil and you're sitting at an idle you know maybe you're 240 degree oil temperature you're sitting at an idle where you're around 900 rpm you want to make darn sure that that valve seated and sealed and that way the engine's able to take advantage of all the pressure the system will take out or put out. If that valve's leaking, then that means it's a loss of oil pressure going throughout the engine. You're just bypassing the oil. All right, this is an oil pump uh, that's already been pressure tested. You can look at the gauge up here and see where the valve opens and then reseats and recloses. So that one popped off about 70 PSI and it hit the seat at 40. Generally, if you work it back and forth a couple of times on a brand new spring, it will take seat. I would say that that oil pump's in perfect condition, ready to, for final assembly and ready to be installed. But if the valve is leaking, I'll show you a couple procedures here, and what we can do to help seat and seal it. Okay, now we're set up with a brand new oil pump that's fresh from the machine shop. Uh, we've got it mounted up to the plate. There's one note that I didn't make earlier is you're going to want to make sure that you're using some large diameter washers on your oil pump on the oil pump bolts because we don't want to damage uh, the face of the oil pump. Um, so we're going to go through the process. One thing that you're going to want to do is come up with a punch that fits the back of the plunger. There's something out of your toolbox. Uh, that way you can use to get a little force on it. If uh, you need to clean up the bore or reseat it, this is a reamer that we sell, 7 16 reamer. You can go down in there and clean up the shelf. What we like to see is the shelf and the bottom of the bore squared off 
uh, as best as possible because that's going to mean that you're going to create a smaller seat which is going to require less spring pressure to hold the valve down and seat and seal it. This is very similar to doing a valve job in a cylinder head where you're working with the valve and the seat. Um, so this is a little trick. This is our part number 9008. Allows you to clean that up, especially if you've got an oil pump where you've had some debris flow through it and it's damaged the aluminum seat. I uh, like to have an eighth inch roll pin um, handy and you can use that for your testing so that you don't have to push the roll pin in and out each time. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of lubrication. We always set and spray that down into the bore. I'm going to drop the valve down in there. One thing that I like to do, this is you know, brand new pump just to help the seat here. Just a little tap. All right, the valve's in. We're going to drop the spring in. We also sell this tool, part number 9001. Allows you to hold the spring down and use your eighth inch punch or the roll pin. Makes it easy for disassembly and installation. We're going to center the spring in there. Now we're going to go ahead and see where we're at with this relief valve. Excellent seat and seal, but the full pop-off pressure is a little too high. So what we're going to do is back the pressure off. I'm going to pull the spring out and I'm going to work the spring just slightly. And once again, remember a brand new spring is always going to set just a little bit after it goes through some heat cycles. It's kind of what we have found through the years. So I don't mind setting these up, you know, say 65 um, out of the gate, knowing that it's going to come down a little bit after it sees uh, some cycles. I'd say this pump is pretty much ready to rock and roll. If you wanted to take the spring down a little bit, play with it, you could bring that full pop off. But this is a really nice one that it's seated in sealing at 40 PSI. Once again, if you were having problems where this valve wasn't leaking, or I mean it wasn't seated in sealing and it's leaking, that's when you'd want to take the reamer and just touch up that seat to re-square it off and then start over. If you feel you need to ream the oil pump, little trick is we want to spray some lube down into the bore. And then I want to crank the air up on the regulator so I'm shooting air through here while I'm using the reamer. We're just going to go down there just enough to touch that seat up because we want to square it off. Another trick, if you find just a little tap of the plunger with the punch by hand doesn't work, you can use a hammer to get a little bit more aggressive with it. But we always like to have the air on when we are tapping at it, whether it be with a hammer or by hand. Once again, by hand, we're going to do that. If you need to use a punch, what I like to do is you hold the thing down. Lift it up off the seat just slightly. The air going around it will help center it, and then you can give it a little tap. You can rotate the plunger 180 degrees. If you have a problematic seat, you know you may have to play with it a little bit, but that's a good way to get it seated and resealed. We're now ready to install the roll pin. I like to install it so that the split of the roll pin is facing up and away from the spring. We have a lead that's machined into the aluminum housing, so it allows you to install the roll pin much easier, so you don't have to hold that. You're going to use the tool 9001 to hold the spring down, and then we're going to pop the roll pin through.